It's Unstable Topic with Sarah and Maggie. Hey, bestie. Hey, bestie. I can't stop thinking about the fact that we recorded four episodes that will never see the light of day. Maggie, if I can tell you how many times I think about how funny those bits were, like I was driving the other day and we talked about speeding tickets and I'm like, gosh, I can't wait for people to hear about how many speeding tickets I got during college, but no one ever will. No one ever will. And it's because my mic wasn't plugged in and I can't stop thinking about how that's the most Maggie thing to happen is Do you really record think it four wasn't- episodes of a podcast without a microphone it really wasn't plugged in like it wasn't connected you don't think it was connected I don't know I don't know it has to have been my fault it has to have been no no I'm taking this all on myself don't put this on you I will not let you carry this burden alone this is not your burden to carry I'll blame my computer how about that it's like we're in this together we're in this together it's you and me me and you and we lost those four episodes together. And just to be clear, when we say four episodes, we mean eight facts, eight games, mm-hmm. eight hey besties, eight eight things eight prepared, things. and four really solid episodes. And you know what, though? I have come to terms with the fact that there's more fun to be had. Absolutely. And you know what? This is a great peek behind the curtain for our listeners because mm-hmm. we will not use those facts and reacts in those games. Again, once no. we do it, it's done because one of the coolest parts and the, my favorite part about our podcast is that I never know what you're going to bring at me. Yeah, I, don't know I never know what way. you're going to throw. And one of the fun things that no one will ever hear is that we both brought the same game. We both brought the same Jack to the table for You Don't Know Jack. And no one will know that because no I'm not even going to say what that Jack was. We're not going to say we're it. never going to talk about it. I'm glad we talked about this though. Maggie, are you ready for your fact? I am. A type of sea slug has been found to not only survive decapitation, but to be able to grow a whole new body from it. Oh, interesting. It doesn't grow a new head. It grows a whole new body. So the body's done. Like you decapitate the sea slug, the body's kaput, nothing in the body, but the head will regrow a body. That's interesting. Cause in my, in my head, I was like, you cut off the head, the body grows a new head. Mm-hmm. Cause it seems like it's a smaller part, but I guess the head's kind of important. Kind of. It has the brain. I'm assuming the sea slugs have their brains in their heads. Because you know how some animals, their brains are located other places. Right. And the brain would be the one that would be like, it's time to grow a new body. Versus like a stomach would just be like, blah, 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 blah. It's like, it doesn't even think it needs a head. A stomach's no. so dumb. Stomachs so dumb. are so dumb. So dumb. Sorry, stomach. Please don't get more angry than you already are with me. <laughs> <laughs> Great and beautiful and wonderful. But seriously, compared to a brain... Yeah, I would say stomachs are the dumbest organ for sure. Because they are like so sensitive. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't want to keep harping on stomachs because I don't want them to be mad because like when they are mad, it's no good. But it's like all they do is they're just like, give me food. And then they're like, ooh, that makes my tummy feel, that makes me feel bad. And it's like, okay, it was just a hot wing. So it it also brings up the question for these sea slugs, right? I'm just thinking about this now. If a sea slug, let's say it's an old, old sea slug, like, a hundred year old and he is not ready to die. The sea slug's like, no, I still have more things I want to get done on this ocean floor. Mm -hmm. And he asks his wife, Hey, will you decapitate me so that I can grow a new body and I can keep on living? Do you think that's how it works? No, I don't think that's how it works. Uh, but I you think that's seem, an adorable you seem, picture you've painted for everyone. <laughs> you seem very confident in that in that statement. I mean, I'm just look. I'm not a sea slug. I've never met a sea slug, so I can't say one way or the other. It's you know? true. I it did make me think too. Like worms. When you were a kid, did you ever rip worms in half? No, I'm not a sociopath. Or is that a psychopath? Or is that a Maggie? Both then. Maggie, are you ready to react? I am. I love you. I think you're great. You're not either of those things. Okay. So we just determined that sea slugs can survive with having their head cut off. Mm -hmm. So what's a body part you could live without? 
Well, after this discussion, I am done with my stomach. I'm like, get <laughs> out of there. Just get out of there. I don't need you. That's, I think, the part that I would get rid of. And then I would probably, because then, you know, then you can still eat things, but then it just goes straight to the intestines, I guess. It's just like, I'm ready to go. Well, the stomach breaks down the food. So in theory, like, okay, in the real world, every body part does is something important. is important. Mm-hmm. But let's live in a world where it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it does. If you don't like it, it's gone and your body still functions. So you you would say your stomach. Yeah, only because I'm mad at it now because we talked so much about how dumb it is. But I don't think that's really what I would choose. But right now I'm really passionate about stomach hatred. How about you? Um, I would do stomach only because right now in my life, my stomach has turned on me and it's been a rough 24 hours. Yeah. And I'm thinking through it more like you could still enjoy food. You still right. enjoy the taste. You still have a yeah. stomach. I would never get rid of my tongue like no. ever. Ever. Like the tongue I would keep because that's like, oh, this tastes good. My my teeth like the crunching when you're eating. Oh, yeah. like, that's that's where the action happens. You know the what, stomach's though? like I would consider getting rid of my elbow. And just have a straight arm all the time? Well, I mean, it would be like like a Armstrong arm. Like it would just move everywhere. Oh, like the arm bones. Arm just the the bone of my elbow, because it kills me when I hit that thing. That's true. It's not a funny bone. As to earth signs, Sarah and Maggie are always preparing, which is why it's time to play Till Death Do Us Part. Aww, why? The game where they interview potential replacement besties in case the other one kicks the can. Sarah? I think I found a really great candidate for my replacement as your best friend. He is the founder of Diabetics Doing Things, co-creator of Recreation Dallas, and he's currently trying to live as much like a pro athlete as possible, which you know I also am doing. So I would like to introduce, so excited to introduce, the Rob Howe. Rob, Rob. hi! hi. Oh my gosh, what a great intro, a dream intro. Just to be compared to the athletic prowess of Maggie Ruth Austin, I mean, it's just like uh, truly a a, a huge life goal for me has been reached today. So I don't want to brag, but I can touch my toes. So I mean, well, that makes one of us. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Rob, Maggie did play junior high basketball. Varsity. Oh, sorry. Varsity. So it's very similar to your (laughs) um, collegiate and then pro career. It actually sounds a lot very similar. I'm sure there's uh, a lot of things that went exactly the same way at both levels. So Maggie and I like to talk about it a lot, uh, you know, so I don't want to bore your listeners with all of our, you know, X's and O's <laughs> and like really deep analytics talk about it, but we can, yeah. we can definitely reference that it happened. Well, pick and roll. We're going to ask you a few questions. Are you ready? I'm so ready. All right, Rob, these are important interview questions for us to determine your bestie status. So first off, Rob, would you rather change your last name from how to why or to who? I think, I think I would go why. Uh, I, I think that, you know, as somebody who has lived with the name how for quite some time, uh, I just feel like whenever there's a simple spelling, people tend to try to overcomplicate it. And I think why really opens up the conversation to like, well, why am I pronouncing this different when I know I've seen the word why on a page millions of times in my life. And so that I think is what I would choose. Yeah. Okay. People would be like, oh, Rob. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's usually, that's like the first one that they go with. Sometimes we get a lot of Howie's. There's a lot of Howie fans. I don't know. I think there's some sort of like deep, you know, wo- thread woven into society where they just, they love the name Howie. They just like to say it to me. Yeah, just to you. You look like you could be a Howie, you know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I am making note of that because obviously this is a compilation of all your answers to see if you can beat my new best friend. So um, that has a score that I'm not ready to reveal. Uh, But are you- I'm sweating. I don't know if if you guys can tell. It's a really big uh... deal. It's a big deal. If our friendship dies, I mean, someone's got to step in. You got to be the sub on the bench ready to get in hot. Mm -hmm. I love it. You ready for your next question? I'm, I'm here in the hot seat, ready to roll. Okay. Rob, would you rather eat salad without salad dressing or eat spaghetti without spaghetti sauce? Oh, 
this might be a controversial opinion, but I, I could eat just plain spaghetti noodles without spaghetti sauce. I might choose to do that. So that I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with number two for sure. Cause I don't know. I just feel like a salad with no dressing is, is just a, not a great way to spend an hour. I feel like it, every, no matter how big the salad, it's going to take you an hour to get through a salad with <laughs> I, no dressing. I appreciate two things. One, that there's a time frame for how long a salad takes to eat, you know, mm-hmm. I would love an hour to eat a salad. Uh, and two, do you just do noodles? Like, would it be, would you have butter or just like a noodle straight out of the pot? Oh, I'll for sure supplement uh, with an olive oil, maybe a butter, maybe a pesto if I'm feeling oh. a little saucy. Um, oh. But yes, yeah, spaghetti sauce, uh, while I will eat it, is, is not my is not my go-to noodle topper. You know what? I feel like Rob? that's a really good answer. Yeah, because honestly. fun fact about me, I did not eat spaghetti with sauce until well after college and even to this day i do not prefer spaghetti sauce on my noodles wow. what was Seems the, to be what, going really well wow I, I i think we found our thread like our, wow. our bff potential here okay <laughs> i have one last question for you rob okay when i was pregnant this time around this third time I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes, which made me feel like a failure because literally I had failed this glucose test. It was also a little scary because everything in pregnancy is terrifying. Uh, And ultimately, after the treatment and monitoring and learning more about it, I felt really empowered because I had learned so much about my body, um, my blood sugar, how different foods impacted me. But I have one regret. I never documented having a blood glucose reading of 69 to share with diabetics doing things. How many 69 screenshots do you get in a day? Uh, in a day, I probably, I don't know, one or two, uh, I would say on average. It, it's interesting um, when, I, I guess for listeners, I when people share 69 blood sugars with me, I, I think probably over 2,500 people have shared them with me over uh, the years and some people will just be like, hey, I don't know what this is, but my friend said to send this to you. And I don't know who <laughs> you are, uh, which are my favorite ones. Uh, because, you know, uh, if, if there's one thing I'm most proud of, I think it's that that, that that's my thing. Um, but, you know, isn't pregnancy great to throw you a curveball the third time around? Uh, you you know, like you said, there's there's enough things to worry about. Um, and you know, at Diabetics Doing Things, we are, are really working to kind of raise public awareness about the different types of diabetes and to remove some of that failure stigma because mm. it does feel bad to fail a test, uh, especially uh, when you're Maggie Reith Austin. <laughs> yeah, I don't fail you're things. Just like, ah, no. I was like, I will um, will this. When, there, when I failed the first one, I was like, I will will this to just not be true. But I knew I was going to fail the second time and I was just beating myself up about it. Like, how can I just cheat this test? And you can't cheat it, turns out. So- It it turns out you can't, nor can you control, you know, like it really is, you know, your baby putting pressure on your pancreas and your pancreas just not able to do what it does the right way. And, uh, you know, I think uh, for people in America, there's there's a research that suggests like one in three people are living with some sort of diabetes and most of them Mm. are living with it undiagnosed Uh, and pre uh, pre diabetes is very, um, uh, very common and is very commonly uh, exists in people who, where they don't know that it exists and they, um, their blood sugars are elevated. They're not feeling good there. Uh, and they don't even know that they're, it would be failing the glucose test, so to speak. So, uh, one of the things that we're doing, and, uh, it was really our, our kind of proudest project last year at diabetics doing things was working with North Texas food bank, uh, to, you know, put diabetes research and information in the kits that go out to families and seniors, uh, within the North Texas food bank network. Uh, because they serve about one and a half million people in uh, the, the North Texas area every year. And if one in three people have diabetes uh, and, you know, these people are underserved, uh, they ha- are, are food insecure. Uh, and for the most part, that also adds up to being disenfranchised from the medical system and, you know, not having a consistent presence, uh, you know, in their lives from a doctor or a primary care physician. So we got to tell these people about diabetes because I imagine for you, it was it was a huge surprise to have to radically adjust your life, even you know in the middle of a pregnancy. It was a huge surprise. And I will say I was scared at first, but then I remembered you and so many other people I've been made aware of through diabetics doing things because I follow it, even though I'm not, I don't have diabetes always. Because you're a real one. That's, that's, just, that's just how it goes. <laughs> of course. Um, got to support. But 
Uh, it wasn't as scary knowing that there is a community that manages this for their whole lot, like for a good chunk of their lives. And also that I think you bring with like the 69 screen shares and all of that, you bring such joy to it as well. Um, so I think that's great. And I love what you're doing with the food bank, getting the word out for more people, um, making it less scary and more informative for so many. Um, I just want to let you know, the results are in, I have tabulated it on this sock. And according to the, your answers, Rob, you would make a wonderful replacement for Maggie. Wow. wow. It's, it's an honor. Uh, it's not something I really expected or set out to do in my career, but you know, sometimes you just reach these milestones and I'm just grateful to be even in consideration to even be nominated. Now, Congratulations. I thank you. And I, I just want to say Maggie is not going anywhere. Our friendship is still kicking. She's, we hope this is never the case, but in case, in case, in case, in case, I'm glad you're ready to step off that bench, Rob. Now let's play What Word Am I Thinking Of? Beans. The game where Maggie and Sarah use their telepathic best friend abilities to try and guess the word the other is thinking. I really need it. Like, why is it so hard to always think of a word? Like, it's just a word. Just think of any word. Okay. I know, I have just a think word. of a word. Here, I'll send you a word. You think of that word, and then no. I'll say okay. that word. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Okay. Maggie, I have a word in my mind. What right. word am I thinking of? I already know it. It's breeze. No, it's not. I wasn't it's not thinking breeze. of No, it's not breeze. What? No. No, you did this game wrong. It's supposed to be breeze. I did it wrong here. Close your eyes again. I'm going to send it through. Okay. I'll guess course. again. And then you can give me a hint if, which it's not going to happen, but not if I get it wrong. Time. Okay. Okay. Send it through. Send it through. Oh, received. Okay. Train. No. What? No. It's not train. How did it, how, how did that not work twice? Okay. Give me a hint then, I guess. Something's getting mixed up. It's so weird. This object changes you. You specifically. Oh, this, this is a hat. It's a hat. Of it's a hat. There's a hat. Look, turn around. There's a hat on your wall. I know. That's a reminder that hat Maggie exists. You know, I just like to keep it every day I wake up and I see that hat and I say, you could be hat Maggie today. Thing you think to yourself, not today. No one deserves it today. And then I, I think, have- you know what? No, just be regular, Maggie. Be sweet today. Don't be a don't be a hat, Maggie. But you'll put it on if you need to. It's always there. Yeah, I could always put it on if I need to. That was a good word. I should have been wearing a hat. I would have guessed it if I was wearing a hat, but I wasn't wearing a hat, so I didn't guess it because hat Maggie's way better at guessing than regular Maggie. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, we would love a review, subscribe, or for you to share this with a friend you think would like it. Or all three of those things. You can do all three and make our day and help us grow. Bye.